Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the new import mode in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, I'm going to show you the new import mode. I'll also cover a little bit about what importing is because people do get confused. And for professionals, I'll show you how to get past the new import mode to go right to the media browser if you prefer that. All right, so let's start by showing you what we're importing before we go into the new import mode. When you're importing, you're simply creating a link, a pointer, to a file on a hard drive somewhere. This could be an internal hard drive, external hard drive, or even on a camera card. I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial on copying from cards because that has a whole selection of uh, important things to learn. So let me just show you on the desktop what I have. So I've got a folder called My Trip, and in there I have a video folder with a bunch of videos. I have photos with photos, music with music, and I have an After Effects file here, just as an, another example, but primarily these are the folders. You don't have to do this. This just makes sense. In fact, the new import mode um, will allow you to, to have a completely disorganized, unruly selection of stuff to bring it in. All right, so let's go have a look at it. Okay, just like before, when you start up Premiere Pro, you get the splash screen and it shows you your recent projects. But now when you choose new project in the top left, it takes you to the import mode. And the first thing you'll see is a bunch of sample media here. Let me just address to the professionals who don't wanna use this and wanna to get to um, Media Browser, all you have to do is name the project, find a location, and then click the Create button down in the bottom right. Even though this prompt tells you to select Media to create a project, you actually don't have to select Media to create a project, you can just make a project. And from there, we just jump right into Premiere Pro's regular editing interface. In fact, if you look at the top, left, there's an import, edit, and export mode. As soon as I create a project, edit and export will come become available. And you jump between those. Exporting, which I have a, a full tutorial on that, importing and editing, back and forth. And the next time you wanna import, you can come back here. So the first thing up at the top is naming it. So I'll call this my trip. And this is the location. So I'm going to choose the location here, and it gives me the same dialog box that I got before in Premiere Pro. So there's my, my trip, and I'm going to select that folder. So as soon as it saves that, a Premiere Pro project will also be in that same folder. I just think it makes sense to have the folder and the assets and titles and music and, and images all in one folder. It's easy to know where everything is and it's easy to back it up or move it to a different computer. Okay, so along the top again, this is the location and that's the project name. Like I said, if you're a pro, you can hit create and keep going. Now let's look over here and you can see a location with a star, and this is the sample media that you get. And the sample media, you can hover scrub over top of it and see it. You can enlarge it quite big and see what this looks like. You can also go to a different mode, which is this list view. And this is better if you're trying to find a lot of uh, items, maybe it's photos or something like that. You can also change the order here. You can sort by name, creation date, ascending and descending. There is a filter. So if you have a folder full of things and you just wanna look at the videos, this is a great way to just not look at the, anything else and select the videos. There's also this little eyeball in here where you can choose to look at certain kinds of formats and all of these will be automatic. So if you're looking at uh, Cinema DNG or Red or Airy, it will automatically look at those. And import mode is like Media Browser. It supports camera cards that have a whole bunch of folders. You basically point to the, the folder of the camera card and it will only show you the videos. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so that's how to look at this stuff here. Now on the left-hand side, these are all the locations. 
The sample media, if you want to turn that off, which I do, I can just click here and it's no longer going to be the main thing that comes up. It's still down in here. But you can get to your pictures, music and movies, downloads, all the typical things on your local drive. Or I can go down here to any of the drives that I have connected or any network that I have connected. So I'm gonna go to my demo folder. I'm gonna go back to this list view because it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to double click on uh, video revealed and I'm going to favorite that. So now I don't always have to go to find it. It's right there. And I want to go to this demo file, which is way down here. And that's in here and also favorite this. So you can favorite, th favorite things for the long term, like maybe you have a footage folder with all your footage, you favorite that once and you're always going back in. Or maybe this is just a project I'm working on for a little while and I don't wanna have to go through everything. So I'm gonna favorite that. Okay, so let's go back to our grid view and open this up. Now you'll notice that there's a button in the top left. And if you click anywhere on here or click the button, it will automatically start adding everything down here at the bottom. You can see there's 30 items in here that are going to be imported. If you've accidentally added that, you can turn it off up here. You can also right click and clear that one. And that's what I wanna do with this one here. I wanna clear that because I didn't want it in there. Okay. Sometimes, there we go. And you can clear all. Sometimes I found that those buttons don't always work. But anyway, let's keep going. I'm gonna double click and open this. A little tip, I found that double clicking on the name at the bottom, not the folder, reduces accidentally selecting the folder and the content. So I just make a, a note to double click down here, not up here. Some people won't have that problem, I do. So let's go look at our video folder. Make this a little bit smaller. And there are all my video files. And if, like I said, I can scrub over each one of these to see it. You can select one, it gets added. Control A, Command A on the Mac selects all. Control Shift A, Command Shift A is deselect all. You can shift select, so I, I click here, hold shift and select, and it's gonna select all of those. If you hold the control key on Windows, the command key on Mac, you can just select individual ones. I'm gonna go back to selecting all of them. And then over in the top right, there's copy, new bin, and new sequence. Like I said, I've got a whole different tutorial on copying because there's some, things that are, are unexpected in, in the copy. We're not gonna do that right now. The idea is it's going to copy from one location to another. You can make a new bin. So I can turn this on and I can make a video bin. In case you're wondering, yes, I've already made a folder on my desktop. Currently, the uh, import mode doesn't support importing the folder and the contents, only the contents. So this is one way you can get around that by creating a bin. I can also create a new sequence down here. So I'll call this my trip. And it's going to put all of these assets into that sequence and make a bin and put it in. So let's do that. I'll click create up here. and everything is brought in just like that. So Adobe anticipates this is the way a lot of uh, users, especially newer users, are going to work. You can see there's my bin over there. So you could do this manually before, you can do this through the file import, you can do this through the media browser. In fact, the media browser does support uh, folders, so I could have selected the whole My Trip and it would have brought in the assets and the folders, but this is more about the new import mode. So. If I didn't have to stop and explain, I clicked on a folder, I opened, I selected a bunch of images, made a bin, made a, a sequence, boom. Let's go back over to import. And I'll go back out one by going up to here and, and clicking on my trip. That's gonna take me out one. I'm going to double click on the folder, the photos, select those, not make a sequence. 
but I will make another bin, photos. Import that. And now I've got all my photos. If I wanna drag one above here, I can do that. So I've got a photo that I can use. Or if I want, I could take the photos and drag them down to make a new sequence from that item. Now all of my photos are in here. Good. Now one little tip I'm gonna do, you'll notice that these photos are all different sizes and some fit and some don't. Uh, some people will select these and choose scale or fill, uh, scale to frame size or fit to set to frame size. Those don't do what a lot of users expect. They expect a fill frame. So fill the frame, don't make black bars on any side. You can't do that with a command unless you're using Excalibur. This is a little third party tool that I use and it's it will do that exact thing. So now every one of these has filled frame. I've got a whole tutorial about using Excalibur and I love it. All right, remember I had music? Well, let's go back and get the music. So I'll go back to import, up at the top, go back to my trip, open up music, select all of that, name it music, and import that. Okay, so now I've got my music and I can drag those tunes down in there and play. Okay, so I've got a good organized project and I can now save this and uh, add to it. I wanna go back to the import, back to my trip and open up the After Effects folder to show you that currently the import uh, mode does not support bringing in After Effects, Mogerts, After Effects, um, templates, comps, or even Premiere Pro projects like you can do with the media browser. I bet you it's gonna be added in the future, but right now, if you look, here's images, video, and audio. That's the idea behind this. If you come from Adobe Premiere Rush, that's where this interface came from. And a lot of people will uh, find the simplicity good. Other people will find Media Browser better. So like I said, you can just name the project, get into the uh, project itself and bypass this if you want. Um, okay. I think I might have uh, had some notes here. I wanted to make sure that I covered everything. Yeah. So that's really it. Um, honestly, I don't know how much I'm going to use this. Maybe if I want big visual previews of something, I will come back here and, and use it. I can come back over to my demo drive, like I mentioned earlier, and I've got a whole uh, footage folder, A, B, C, D, footage. I have to open that up and then make this a favorite. Now I've got my footage. There's my art grid stock. I'll add that. Go back to my footage. Go to art list, music, and sound effects. Add that. So I've got stuff that I can jump right to very easily. Oh, and there's sample media came back up here. Uh, remember, I unfavorited, is that a word now? I unfavorited it. I unstarred it before and it restarted itself. So I think there's uh, still some uh, cobwebs in this code, in this new uh, import dialog box, because I have had things reappear that I unstarred and they starred themselves. And uh, for this demo, I actually unstarred everything. And then occasionally when I came back while I was developing this tutorial, <laughs> everything that was unstarred was all starred again. So, um, I'm sure they'll fix that. But there you go, there's uh, a look at the new import dialog box. I'm sure it's gonna be great for a lot of new users, uh, very visual, very easy to see, very easy to pick the things that you want. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. We love all of our wonderful donors. Thank you so much for supporting us. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to have a look at what Adobe's doing and uh, get past the marketing and, and show you the real um, tools that are in there and some things to watch out for.